Welcome back, Loans Can Be Fun podcast Woo-hoo! listeners. Yeah. Today we are joined again with Scott Nelson because hey. he knows so much. We have to bring him back again. Yeah, and we're going to have more than this. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and before we go into it all, we have to do the boring stuff. So wah, Disclaimers. Wah, wah. Yeah. This is not a commitment to lend, and this does not apply to you individually, and you should reach out to us if you have any questions, and this is for entertainment purposes only. Perfect. Yep, and I'm not giving tax or legal advice, but to do my job, I have to know enough about both areas to try to navigate it. Um, Not a solicitation to sell. Uh, Don't act on any of this. It's not individual. Yeah, so you got to reach out if you actually want to find out what your specific situation will allow. Now that we've got the boring stuff out of the way. (laughs) Whatever, that was so fun. (laughs) What are we going to talk about today? Estate planning. We asked Scott to kind of talk about estate planning and the best way to do some of these things and things to watch out for. So I'm going to turn it over to you because I don't even know what questions to ask. (laughs) Oh, my favorite disclaimer on this is I'm not a lawyer, but I could play one on TV. (laughs) Perfect, (laughs) perfect. Um. Estate planning really is nothing more than deciding who gets your stuff when you're not around anymore, Mm -hmm. permanently, right? When you're not around permanently. And when you're not here to say, hey, I want this done. And so you don't have to do anything. It's true. Your family's going to have to figure it out. The state has a plan. Mm -hmm. And so if you die with any titled assets... Your family will become acquainted with probate, and if you we deal with that on our end of the mortgage things. If people haven't done yeah. wills and trusts, hashtag yikes. Yeah, so <laughs> you don't have to do anything. The state has a plan. Um, in Utah, you may have heard the the term executor or executrix. We don't have those here. We have personal representatives, and the personal representative is the person the court appoints to be able to act in your behalf in signing over your stuff. Is that usually like a, an appointed person by the state, like an attorney or something, or is it well, a family so, member? You know, if a person dies without a will or a trust, they call that dying intestate. They didn't have their stuff done. So the first thing that has to happen is they have to determine who should be your personal representative and so that's usually going to be your heirs who want your stuff. Right. And they all show up in court and, uh, you know, I'm sure your children will never fight or never. argue. We never see that. But <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens in court is where people come and fight and argue. And the attorneys like it. They make A good hourly doing. rates doing that. And I have some estate planning attorneys that I love. I think they're awesome very much worth their while, they'll tell you the same thing. So first, a personal representative needs to be appointed by the court as being the authorized person because you can't sign anymore. You're not Mm -hmm. here. So here you go. So then they have a pecking order already decided. You know, the surviving spouse gets it all if there is one. If not, then the kids. If not, then the parents. If not, then the siblings. If not, then... And they kind of go down the pecking order. I bet it gets complicated if you have, like, step-parents with step-kids and things like that, right? And that would never cause any fights either. No, no, never, never. never. Um, This is where having an estate planning attorney actually in studio with us would be a lot of fun because they have... I actually have have somebody that I think was going to come, but we can... Bring better like people, stories. You know. Yeah. Better <laughs> stories. Better stories. But um, one of my favorite stories that he's told me is, and and Zenic Bishop is the source of the story, oh, and he's he's doesn't. an excellent yeah. estate planning attorney. That's all he does. So if you have issues, I would recommend him wholeheartedly. Um, there was a couple. It was a second marriage for both. Okay. Um. He had a house, and it never became, well, maybe it did become jointly owned. It didn't matter. Um, He became stepdad to her child. He never really knew his. He didn't know his kids? 
they were estranged okay. and just never, you know. Never spent much time with them. Okay. Probably one of those So fast, mom fast forward <laughs> however many decades of marriage later, she dies first. And then he passes after her. Guess who got the house? His estranged children. That is so messed up. Because they never did anything to mm -hmm. say this is what we want. So then the rules oh my gosh. of the state fell into effect. And, and the child who'd never been in the house, never cared about the house. Didn't care about the dad either. Uh, any of the rest oh, got the house. So... You know, if you want to make sure That's things are done up. right, you have to take a little bit of action. And I mean, I, and most trusts, if it, if it's not overly complicated, they're I mean, they're worth they're absolutely worth what they cost. It's cheaper than probate. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely. It's cheaper than probate. And I, you know, I've had people, you know, six hundred dollars. That's a super cheap one. You know, two probably I would say fifteen hundred to two thousand is typical. Yeah. yeah. You sure. know, depending on how complicated your situation yeah. is. Yeah, for most people, and for most people. You know, so here's here's a top secret thing. So when you're planning your estate, you can have a will. You can write it yourself on a napkin. It doesn't cost a thing. It needs to be in your handwriting. You need to have a date on it, and you need to sign it. Does it need to be notarized? Mm -mm. Okay. No, if, if it's in your handwriting, mm -hmm. that suffices. So you can't type it up on a computer. That will not work. It has okay. to be holographic. That's the fancy name for I okay. wrote it by hand. Okay. And that will work. And here's who I want to get my stuff. Great. Still has to go to probate. But they'll probably... But it'll probably honor your wishes. Okay. Okay. We've got that. And then the next one for most people would be a revocable living trust. The only purpose of that trust is to avoid probate. Yep. Probate can be lengthy. Uh, you can have some Especially interesting Especially if people claims. are fighting over stuff. It can go on for a while. Um, so by avoiding probate, um, you've avoided that headache and heartache and here you go and you, you've got your stuff in your trust. But the secret that I want to tell you is that beneficiaries on accounts trump a trust, a will or anything else. Really? Yeah. Wow. So you can go to your bank and, not know that. and you can say, <laughs> I want to either depends on the bank and the I culture. I guess I do know that in a way because I have my beneficiary as my trust. Well, let's talk about that. I think. That, yeah, because I had to go to the bank because somebody told me to go to my bank and do that. Maybe that's wrong. Well, no, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's um, unnecessary. Yeah. Okay? okay. If you've named, if you said, okay, if I die, because all the trust does is it says, I want my stuff divided like this. Right. If you name your beneficiaries. In the trust. You've done, no, at the bank. At the on, bank. At the okay. account. Done. Now, this happens a lot. Okay. He's going to tell me something dumb I did. <laughs> you're you're going to want to change something. Okay. So, so people go and they pay good money to a good attorney to have a good trust done. They want to use it. Okay. And so then they go to their broker or agent, whoever they have their IRAs with, and they say, okay, I want my trust to be my beneficiary. That's what people tell you. That's what's, yeah. N not people who know what they're doing. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. So Interesting. So check this out. So I brought my handy-dandy tax reference. So if we had a beneficiary named and the individual gets an inheritance because tax-deferred accounts like 401Ks, IRAs, 403Bs, 457s, you know, yeah. that list, how are they taxed? They shouldn't be. Right? They are. It's ordinary income on oh, distribution. Oh, because they're the tr they're the pre-tax ones. You're saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're taxed when you pull them out, typically. Correct. Okay. All right. So you name your trust as the beneficiary, and it gets it. Then the trust mm. has to pay the tax on that income. So let's look here for estates and trusts. Where does the thirty-seven percent bracket start? Over 14450 That's not very so, much. That's not much, and it's no. taxed at 37% yeah. federal plus state if you're in a state that has Yikes. tax. Or the individual can get it, and they can get a lot of money. Yeah, it's like 89000 to about 190 at only 22%. Okay. So, so you'd be better giving it to the individual that you'd want it to be left to. Now, what bingo. if they die before you? 
and then it just goes to the next beneficiary? Um, well, you can specify on there, right, how you want to do that. So there's usually a box for the beneficiary designation, and it, it might say something fancy like per sturpus. Hmm. Or... <laughs> I've never even heard that word in my entire life. <laughs> Another Scrabble hint. Yeah, there you go. Persturbus. Persturbus. Spell it for me. Um, P E R space S T E R P E S. Okay. Okay. Persturbus. Um, it means their their heirs get it right. Okay. So if you named your kids as contingent beneficiaries, and one of them happens to predecease you, heaven forbid, then their heirs. Get, get the their share. Hmm. It's still going to individuals, right? Okay. So please, 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 please don't hurt my heart by naming your trust. Your I, beneficiary I know. on you your bank. retirement I, Well, accounts. you know what? I'm real, I was thinking about it. I don't think my bank ever took it because they wanted more paperwork than I wanted to do at the time. And then I forgot. I know my 401k has a beneficiary as the trust, I think. So I need to go Ooh, change that. Yeah, please. Because I got bad advice. Hurry fast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's um, open enrollment. It's perfect time. <laughs> so, um, yeah, deferred accounts. <laughs> really, you want your house. You need to go check. I can't. You want your house it. in the trust for sure. Um, Utah can't speak for other states, but Utah has a, a waiver. So, for vehicles, if you go in with the death certificate and the title, they'll just sign the car over to you. It's not a big deal. Okay. okay? Um, Mainly, it's real estate that you want to have in the trust, yeah. and and that'll take care of it. Everything else you can name beneficiaries for, and it'll do the same thing, or so, better. So, like somebody like me who's made a mistake like that, like do they do I actually come to you and say, "Hey, look at how things are set up," and you tell me? Sure, what we to do fix a free review. Okay. Yeah. And then, because I know that's not necessarily something you would get paid to do, but the, the general thing is hopefully you help with all the other stuff that I'm going to need from a financial planning thing. Yeah, we just want to make sure people don't get in a mess. Yeah. That's well, it is, it, And obviously, I'm a prime example of getting bad advice from somebody it who didn't. It happens all the time. I know. And that, I mean, and we think that even in our business, we're like, who the heck told you to do that? Mm -hmm. You know, who told you to close your credit card? You know, because they thought that they'd, you know, oh, have Boost too much your credit yeah, score. Too much credit available. No, you just killed your history, which is 35% of your credit score. So we're, you know, mm -hmm. obviously we don't know the things you know, and that's why I want people to call you, and that's why I will be calling you. <laughs> well, and, and, the, and the key to all of this stuff is find somebody who is a fiduciary who has processes and procedures and checklists in, in there to make sure that we don't miss things, mm -hmm. that we've identified all of the critical facts to a decision so that we're making a decision knowing what all of the ramifications are yeah. of it, right? Well, and I think that's why having a professional like you that works with an accountant or an estate attorney that they all know kind of the, all the pieces mm -hmm would be really important to have everybody communicating on that. Because, I mean, I don't know what I don't know. And I exactly. go and do something and I screw up my retirement and get mm -hmm. taxed at $14,000 versus 190 yeah. or whatever. Well, I mean, who would you rather have get that money? Oh, yeah. The not the government. No, not the government. There you go. I rest <laughs> my case, Your Honor. I'm very, I'm very strong on that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> another thing that we really ought to address would be those families who have special needs adult children. Okay. Because you want to be fair, you want them to get their share, but usually they're receiving like SSI, uh, Medicaid benefits maybe. You mean Social Security income. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, acronyms. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Um Suddenly they inherit and they have assets, mm -hmm. and suddenly they're kicked off their programs. Oh my gosh! So and if the money's in the trust, they wouldn't be. Well, what you want is for a special needs trust to be created for that child. Okay. That way, the child is not receiving the asset directly, but it is available for them. To survive and... To get by with, but they don't technically have it. And you've also, in the process, identified who's going to be their uh, custodian. 
Well, and if you think about that, yeah, a family who has a special needs child, like that would be so stressful not to know that they're going to be taken care of after Mm -hmm. the fact. And especially if you just didn't set it up properly and you could have, you know, so that's, that's a really good point. And I, I've never even thought about that. And while you can do a lot of things on your own, the internet's a wonderful thing. I would just point out that the laws vary from one state to another. Um, So be really careful if you go about that. I think paying an attorney is well worth it to have it done right the first time. And especially if you're going to structure a a special needs trust as a part of a revocable living trust, that's just well worth every penny you can pay. That's awesome. For the peace of mind of knowing you've got all that handled. For sure. I mean, yeah, that's huge. I mean, I think with my children, I don't have a special needs child, but I think about it. It's like if I pass away right now, they definitely need help. And they definitely, I don't want to give them, you know, whatever is left. Let's say it's $200,000 a kid or, or whatever. I don't want to give that to a 12-year-old. You know, so in, through a trust, mm-hmm. I can specify who helps them, when they get it, how they get it. Like, mm-hmm. I think in our trust that I had set up, I think it was that they would get it in three different increments. So mm-hmm. they didn't get it all at one time. Yeah. Just because, you know, you may need it at different times throughout life. And Yeah, no, that's so true. And that may so change true. at some point that we alter it based on their ages. Yeah, no, there's a family that I'm familiar with. And um, grandma had created quite the real estate portfolio. Mm -hmm. She had a bunch of rentals and they were doing well for her. Um, She'd done most of that as a young widow. I mean, I I couldn't take my hat off anymore, show more respect for what she amassed in her lifetime and did great with it. She had two daughters. When she passed... The assets were literally split, and each daughter got a certain amount of rentals Mm -hmm. to work with. And she had a trust set up? Mm -hmm. Okay. And doing it that way was awesome because um, if you, what, what a lot of people think is, well, I won't do a trust. I'll just put my child's name on the deed. Don't do that. Step up in basis, anyway. Step up in basis is what I'm thinking, but at the same time, just liability protection. I mean, heaven forbid there's a a fluke accident somewhere. I had somebody rear-end me coming out of Chick-fil-A a a week or so ago. So, I mean, you never know what might happen, and and then who's going to get sued in the process. And so, um, but the step up in basis is lost if you put their name on there, but if you're using a trust, there's a step up in basis, and so there's no capital gains tax liability. But then on top of that, now this one of the daughters passed away within six months of mom's oh, passing. Man. Yeah. And her kids were in their early twenties. Now I don't know how you were at that age. If I'd have got that awesome. kind of money <laughs> at that age, it'd have been blown in a heartbeat. See, I, and, I think I would have actually been okay. These kids blew it in a heartbeat. Oh, no. Um, Three years later, they have nothing to show for it. They sold the rental properties because they didn't want to be bothered to their aunt and then took the cash and they went through new cars and tattoos and body art of all kinds (laughs) and et cetera. And within three years, they were working graveyard shift at a convenience store. Oh, my goodness. See, and you, yeah, it's like, I think my dad always put a healthy fear of not having money into Mm -hmm. me. So just as a side note, my father was an orthopedic surgeon who made me think he was the poorest man on earth. So he actually instilled, I had a little bit of a fear. I remember one Christmas thinking, what can I do to earn money to help? Like, he kind of was like, I don't know how we're going to do Christmas. But by doing that... It made me think more about like I can't just go blow it. I, I'm not. I'm not great. I mean, I'm not nearly as great as my husband is with money. I like to enjoy things a little bit more, but like I do save for retirement because of mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, with a trust, you can put those spendthrift clauses in, yep. where you can pull strings. We have a client who, in his trust, said. Um, 
if the kids are under 18, their guardian can have enough to make sure that they're fed and sheltered and clothed. Mm -hmm. That's it. Receipts have to be submitted. After 18, they can have a certain monthly allowance until, in his case, he put in, until they've completed Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace <laughs> University yeah. and can show their certificate yeah. and a budget, and then they can have a certain amount and and so on. And so that they were eased into having the assets. Well, I mean, so you can see how, how that would be hard, especially if you're young. All of a sudden, you just have tons of money. And if you hadn't been taught that, Those hey, Lamborghinis don't come cheap. No, they don't. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I don't even want. I want one. one. I don't want one. <laughs> I don't want one either. But. I don't. I like speed in certain things, but I'm a total wuss when it comes to some things. Like I'll dye my hair pink, but don't put me in like a boat in a tube behind a boat. I just sit and scream the whole time. <laughs> my kids love it, but I hate it. But then, you know, anyway, I digress. But being prepared is really the bottom line for these things, and wills and trusts are huge for that. And it, but I think working with a financial planner and your attorney and your accountant to make a good, solid plan is paramount. It's huge. Yeah. Sadly, most Americans, according to recent studies, spend more time planning their vacation than they do their retirement or their estate. I play I play video games on my phone more than I plan. <laughs> it, but it's true, though. I mean, or that. Yeah, it's just, but the, it, it's not as fun, right? And so, but it's way more important. And I think that's what we all have to realize. I do have a trust, so I've done some of the things, but I'm Good. not I'm not set up Congrats. how I should be. If we did it quite a long time ago. Well, you ago, should look through it once a year. I actually think I might, I probably need to redo some things because now my kids are a tiny bit older. I don't even, I think we had our first kid when I did it, and he's now 14. Um, the advice that we were given when we did ours was that you should sit down once a year and, and review it. Pick, what pick is the it, date. What does it mean when they say a trust, you got to make sure your trust is funded or that it's not underfunded? What does Great that mean? Great question. Okay, so... Because I've heard people you've, say you've that. You've gone you to make your sure. attorney, and you've paid him money, and he's handed you a three-ring binder full of paper that includes your trust documents and your powers of attorney and et cetera. And you want it to include your house, and a, a good attorney is going to have that trust transfer deed in there, mm -hmm. but you never go to the courthouse and record it. Okay, okay. So the house is not legally owned by the trust, meaning you did not fund the trust. You didn't put, mm. if the trust is the legal box to put things in, if you never put the things into the box, it's not, it's not funded. Oh, geez. And so the trust is there. It's gorgeous. It, it says things just the right way, but you didn't actually get the assets into it so that it has rules. I was just sitting here thinking, so like when I bought my most recent house, we closed it and put the title and then, well, we need to put it in the name of the trust. Mm -hmm. And then that's yeah. all I need to do for that specific thing because, yep. you know, depending on what the trust says about the home, that works. And then... But if you had forgotten to go do that, like I'm remembering right now that I haven't done that mm, since June, there you go. <laughs> then then that I mean my trust like the house part is technically un unfunded. It's, a, it's not funded. Yeah. The trust won't govern. Now most of the time, a good attorney is going to have several things in that trust package. They're going to have the uh, the trust agreement itself. They're going to have. A certificate of trust, it's kind of like the trust ID that you would give to the bank or the mm -hmm. title company that gives the exact name of the trust when it was established and who the yeah. parties are. It's going to have what they call a pour over will for each partner, P O U R. So P -O -U. It, it, okay. it's poured over and fills okay. in the cracks. So if you forgot to put something into the trust, your pour over will will leave whatever else to mm -hmm. the trust, so then the rules of the trust were governed, but you'll still have to go to probate. Okay. And then it will also have power of attorney for assets, and then in, uh, power of attorney for health care. In Utah, uh, the law is that there's a, a combined four-page document that's a power of attorney slash living will, mm -hmm. you know, yep. directive to physicians document, and then it would have whatever funding documents you need to make sure everything's tidy. So an attorney's point of view typically is, okay, here we are. I've, I've done all the legal stuff. You just need to go fund it. Mm -hmm. They're not going to go take Yeah, they're not going to go do those things. To do all the stuff. Um, 
So. Well, and I think what also happens, because we did our trust 14 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, that yearly review would have addressed, you know, yeah. several of my issues. <laughs> pick, pick, pick a time, New yeah. Year's Eve, wedding anniversary. April you know, Fool's. April, April Fool's, Fool's. Whatever it is. <laughs> you know what? Pull the we trust should do it out. on a holiday that's like, why do we have that holiday? And make that my... And then thumb like through the pages. I'm just what, I know what has Thanksgiving's changed? About. Is there somebody you want to disinherit? Is uh, there, you know what's funny? Do you, do you we want have to clients... change who is the successor trustee? Yep. So we have clients that are doing reverses and based on what their kids have done to them in the last couple of years, they like want to disown them and other things like that. And it's so true. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah. Is one child more mature now mm. than the other? Do you have an addict? Do, do, do they... you have, you know, <laughs> things like that? So, it yeah. happens. It happens. Yeah, so I, I definitely need to have some stuff revisited. Does someone have stuff? a weird obsession with Lamborghinis and Lamborghinis. is going to spend all their money on Lamborghinis? Yeah, could happen. Could happen. I would if they're like this big little so, match car. Thing. You know, go through, review it, okay. um, see where you're at. So do people bring their trust to you so you can see if they have a big glaring thing? Or is that something that I know you're not an attorney, but... No, I'm not an attorney, but... Um, let's say that they do have a non-qualified account mm -hmm. that's owned by the trust. And when we, he says non-qualified, that's like... It's not an IRA. It's not a 401k. It's not a 403b. It's not a tax Just like qualified. mutual funds that you have yeah. elsewhere. It's, it's an investment account, and, and the trust owns it, and that's all cool. Um, I need to see the trust documents because I need to know that as trustees... Does the trust give them the authority to deal in those types of assets? Okay. Okay. So, yeah, we look through them and just to, a courtesy, make sure beneficiary designations are as they should be. Because if I saw that your trust was the beneficiary of your 401k, 401k like, I would pull out that sheet and say, uh, Let's switch that. You don't really want to do that. And yeah. here's why. Yeah. Right. So, you know, obviously. Those of us who don't deal in the realm of estate planning on a regular basis can make a lot of mistakes and have a lot of screw ups. And that's why it's important to talk to you and, you know, estate planning attorneys yeah. so that you, you know, do it right. And you have people you said you would recommend. Yeah. And so um, get in touch with Scott. He knows a lot of people, too, and can get you with the right people if you have to go yeah. do a will or a trust, but can also make sure that it's set up properly for how your finances need to be set up and that sort yeah. of thing. Find someone with processes and checklists to make sure stuff doesn't fall through the cracks. Make yep. sure your money's not falling through the cracks. We hate that. Yeah, and remind people how they can get in touch with you. You can reach us at ask, A-S-K, Scott Nelson, N-E-L-S-O-N, <laughs> dot com, or you can call us at 435-723-3370. Such good information. I mean, I learned a lot, and I know that I have some work to do on my own stuff, but, I mean, that's okay. Cool. Like I'm still alive. I can still that's do these things. That's what we're here things. for, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, get in touch with Scott, and thanks again for coming, and we'll Pleasure. have him on again for all the things that we don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Stay tuned. Thanks so much, you guys. Appreciate you. <laughs>